Yo, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Lorel Komolzak, and you're listening to the Socially Awkward Podcast. I'm back. I'm ready to get started, y'all. It's been a long journey, a long hiatus since I've been back on this podcast. I only did season one, but I'm back for season two. I already got season three in the wraps. Y'all, it's going to be phenomenal. I want you to know that. I, I'm not just talking. I'm for real. Like, I feel like in this season, God had to sit me down for a time. Like, he had to tell me. He told me to sit down for a minute and rest. And because I've always been busy. Like, this year has been a very busy year. Um, my wife and I, we did IVF again for the last time. We ain't doing it no more. We did IVF again uh, for the last time. And um, we got pregnant. And we have a a son on the way due at any moment at this moment in time. And uh, so we've been ramping up for that and making sure our boys, our twin boys are good. Um, Just getting a lot of things in order this year. And it's just was that time was just we're so busy, you know. And um, and so I've I've taken some time away from the podcast, even after season one. So now I'm ready. I'm back. Um, I feel like God had to sit me down to kind of upload and download some things for me to share to the world. And this is the time where I feel like these next upcoming seasons and episodes are really going to help you. They're going to make you full and rich. I'm telling you, you're going to want to tune in because I got season series, y'all. I got, um, I got, I got it planned out. It's it's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to make sure that you're going to be full. It's like going to Big Mama's house, and you know, you don't know what's in the house, but you know you're hungry, and you say, "Mama, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Ain't nothing in the house." You know, you can't just door dash no food because you're in the country. This is, this is how I grew up. We're in the country. You can't just door dash some food. You know, you just got to sit there and just wait. And mom goes in there and opens the pantry. I'm thinking there's nothing in the house to cook. All of a sudden, you see smothered pork chops. You see mashed potatoes and gravy. You see yams. You see collard greens. You see the whole nine. All of a sudden, you get done. You finish eating. You're like, man, I am full. Like, I'm full. You know, I don't know why I did that to myself, but I just want to go to sleep. Like, sleeping after a soul food meal is probably the best sleep of your life. I promise you. <laughs> so that's how I grew up. And I feel like after you listen to every episode upcoming, you're going to be full like you was at Big Mama's house. Like, you're going to be ready to take a nap. That's how good it's going to be. I promise you. It's going to be good. So I'm excited, man. I'm glad that I took the time off. Um because for me, I'm not in a rush. Um, I think a lot of people get in a rush to do things, um, a rush to be great. But it's God always, he has to process you. In order for you to do great things in this world and to become great and to become known and to get exposure, like sometimes you have to be developed first. I was talking to my friend Alex about being developed. Like God does certain things behind the scenes in order for people. So when that they're exposed, they're able, they're able to handle that exposure, they're able to handle the fame, or they're able to handle the success or the money, the finances that come with it. And I feel like God has been processing me and developing me um, where, you know, it takes time. Like certain things, I, I just, I'm never, I'm always on God's time. I'm never in a rush to be on this platform or a rush to create my own platform. I'm just, I move when God tells me to move. If he, he says it's time to do a podcast to finish it up, I said, all right, cool. He tells me to rest. Okay, cool. And it's very important that you're obedient to the word of God, because if you move ahead of him, you'll lose sight of him and you lose sight of your own purpose. You know, if you move ahead of God and you try to advance the mission, well, you'll find yourself backpedaling. You'll find yourself looking behind you saying, well, where did I go wrong? Because you went ahead of God. And if you have to look back to see, God, where are you? That means you went too fast. That means you've, you've gone too far. If you have to look back and say, God, where are you at? You're supposed to be following me. God's like, no, oh, if you got it in reverse, I'm supposed to, you're supposed to be following me, God says. You feel what I'm saying? And so a lot of times we we try to advance the mission. We try to go too fast. We try to go too far. We try to go ahead of God. And God is trying to slow us down and say, look, follow me. Follow the drumbeat of my heart. And I'll guarantee you, you'll get to the place of promise, the promise that I have for you that you'll be ready for. And so um, I feel like that's what God has been doing. He's been prepping me. He's been preparing me, and it's been a good thing. And so I'm really excited about this upcoming podcast, this video podcast. I'm excited about what God's getting ready to do for you guys in your lives, and um, I want to bear witness to that. So if, if you have any great things happening, 
um, and, and God is blessing you either through this podcast or just in general, you know, shoot my reach reach out to me, you know, let me know so that I can either be praying for you, um, you know, and uplifting you, however, whatever I need to do to kind of help uh, facilitate the blessings of God in your life. I'm here for it. So let's get into it. Um, this season series, I got season series this time, y'all. This season series, I'm probably going to be about six or seven episodes. Um, this one's going to be called Triggered. This season is going to be called Triggered. Uh, the holidays are approaching. Um, it's a season where a lot of people are um, emotional around this time. But one thing that I've learned over the years, specifically this year, that is that a lot of people are triggered, including me. I get triggered sometimes, but a lot of people are triggered. And so this first episode is called Help, I'm Triggered. Help, I'm Triggered. Um, so I just want to get started. I've noticed throughout the year, I remember being out of town and my brother called me one day. We were in the hotel and my brother called me. He said, hey, bro, have you seen have you seen what's been going on? I was like, no, nah, what do you mean? What's, what's, what happened? Well, the Oscars, uh, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I was like, what? No, ain't no way. On national television? Yes, he slapped that man. I was like, I got to look at this. I go straight to my room because I was working out. I go straight to the room. I was like, hey, like, babe, you, babe's already on it. I was like, wait one minute. So he just walked up there and slapped this man. Triggered. Triggered. It's a an emotional response. Now, the trigger isn't the action. A trigger is just the catalyst. And so when I saw Will Smith slap Chris Rock because of a joke, that had to be because of something that already that was already brewing within him that uh, that warranted a physical response or or behavioral response based off of the trigger a trigger is just a a sensory reminder of a traumatic event that happened in your life it could be a touch it could be a smell it could be what somebody said it could be a physical sensation it could be the time of day like, who knows? When Will Smith slapped that man, maybe it's the wrong time of day. Maybe, maybe he shouldn't have been at the Oscars. Maybe he should have been at home. But at that time, he was triggered, and he acted on that trigger emotionally and physically. That's just not just one event. That's just the, uh, uh, the other day. Um, last week, Draymond Green, I'm a big sports fanatic. Draymond Green goes and punches his teammate, Jordan Poole, in the face. Just mad. I'm looking at the video. I'm like... Now, Jordan Poole didn't really do nothing for him to be punching him like that. It, it's just, it was very disturbing to see, but Draymond was triggered. Now, whether he was triggered by what Jordan said to him or what was going on outside of practice, apparently it was something that happened outside of you know, practice, outside of the team that he was triggered or he was upset about. But a lot of these things happen. A lot of these outward behaviors happen because of a trigger. Um, a lot of people are triggered, like... It triggered because, you know, you got your pronouns wrong. People triggered because, I mean, culturally, it's triggered because, you know, you said my name wrong or you, you're not acknowledging who I am and, and my identity. You're not, you're not acknowledging. People just triggered. Like, I'm driving and you cut me off. Now, you know what I'm saying? I got to pull something out and, you know, and, and tell you what's up because I'm triggered, you know? And it's just. Everywhere you turn, you can always bet on somebody being triggered by something. And so I asked God, I said, why, why did you have me talk about this? Why am I talking about being triggered in this season? And he was saying that, hey, people need to hear <laughs> that a trigger is okay. Again, a trigger does not, it's a contributing factor to a behavior. But once we understand what the trigger is and what's behind the trigger, I think we'd be able to better, we can better respond to whatever it is that is reminding us of that traumatic event that happened in the past. And so God has been dealing with me re regarding triggers because I can get triggered. Um, I go to zero to 100 sometimes, uh, not all the time, but it usually happens when I'm playing ball or somebody disrespects my wife or something like that. I'm like, hold on. We ain't doing that. Don't disrespect my kids. Don't disrespect my wife. Those are two things. Don't disrespect my kids and my wife. My family are off limits. You go there and you'll see me go to zero to hundred in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Now, is that a trigger for me? Um, yeah, probably so. <laughs> but I think it's just facts for me. Like, you don't talk about my family. You don't talk about my wife. You don't talk about 
my kids at all. Like, keep their name out of your mouth. There's no reason in the world that their name should be in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm going to protect them at all costs. That's just how I was brought up. That's how I was raised. I'm going to protect my family, protect my pack. That's my group. That's my people. Um, and so, but even with that, like, where does the, where does that come from? Where's that anger or the, the pull to protect, the pull to, to make sure that everyone's okay in my group and making sure that I'm not thinking to pop off, you know, with violence or anything like that, but just thinking, okay, how do I respond to certain things that are said about them? How do I respond to certain things that were, you know, that were circulated, you know, regarding my family, if that is the case or if that could have ever happened? How do I respond to that? Do I just walk up like Will Smith and just go slapping people because they said something crazy? No. We have to understand what is behind the trigger. So I got to look within. I got to look within. Like, why, why do I have such an emotional response when it comes to people that I love? Well, because for me, a traumatic event that happened in my life, I lost my father when I was 17 years old. I lost him. He, was, he passed away unexpectedly. Um, it was noted it was a suicide. We never talk about it in our family, something we don't talk about. But it happened. And for me, anybody that I'm associated with, that I'm connected to, that, I've, that I pour my heart out to, I want to make sure I can protect them. I want to make sure that they're good. I want to make sure that they, you know, that no harm happens to them because of what was lost in my life. That's a traumatic event. So there are certain movies that I watch that can trigger an emotion that made me think about my father, that made me think about, oh man, I miss my dad. I could be watching, watching a show and there's an intimate moment that the father and the son has, this connection. And I'm like, man, I miss that. Man, I wish I had that in my 20s. Man, I wish I had that right now. Man, I wish my boys could walk up to their granddaddy and say they love him. You know what I'm saying? The triggers. And so when it comes to protection, when it comes to my family, I have this burden to make sure that everybody is good because I don't want to lose any of them based off of that sensory reminder of a traumatic event that happened in my life. So a lot of things are, a lot of my emotional, a lot of my emotions are tied into the loss of my father. And once we start to understand the why behind the trigger, we'll better understand how to respond. Once we understand the why behind the trigger, we'll know how to, how to um, move when people t test you. We know how to move when people test you. We know how to operate. We know how to, okay, I recognize that you, you're getting under my skin. You're getting under my skin. I feel that, but I'm not going to allow it because the trigger in me is telling me what I should do. And it's telling me, you know, it's pushing me. Because all the trigger does, it just alerts, it induces it evokes. That's what a trigger does. It alerts. It induces. It evokes. It doesn't produce. It it pushes you to produce. It's a contributing factor, but it's not the factor of of the emotional uh, response of whatever is happening to you. And so a lot of times we get it mixed up. Oh, you triggered me, so that automatically believe I, that that automatically means I gotta go up and and respond. Like you triggered me. Like Jesus was triggered all the time. Jesus was triggered, and you know he he said if somebody Slaps you in the face, we'll turn the other cheek. Well, not for me. You slap me in my face. Like, <laughs> for a lot of us, don't just don't don't lay hands on me. You know what I mean? But but Jesus like like understand that just because someone slaps you doesn't automatically mean that you have to slap them back. It doesn't automatically mean that it warrants an emotional response. Because if you are healed. Basically, what he's saying is if you are a healed individual, if you understand the, the response, behind, if you understand the meaning behind the trigger, you wouldn't have to respond. You wouldn't have to respond. You'd be like, oh, OK, cool. That's, if that's where you at, let me go. Let me go another direction. Yeah. Let me go another direction. If that's where you are, I, I'll, I'll give you that one. Don't do it again, but I'll give you that one. Because we understand where we are. And a lot of times we are triggered by other people's trigger. <laughs> We're triggered by other people's trigger. We get upset because of what somebody else is getting triggered by. So when you cut me off and you flick me off, now I'm mad. 
Now I'm triggered because you were triggered by something. And so now you got two triggered people going at it. It's, it's not a healthy situation. So we have to understand just because we get triggered by someone, maybe they're triggered by something. And once we understand and become mature enough to understand, like, oh, okay, you're coming at me sideways because, because you're dealing with something. Because I feel like that's the theme of our life right now. That's the theme of the culture right now. Everybody's triggered by something. What? In order for us to, uh, to control our response, we have to understand that maybe they just triggered by something. Maybe they, they went through something in their life that's causing them to behave that way. And they just haven't healed from it. Because once you've healed from it, you wouldn't have to respond in an irate way. When, you, when you've healed from something, you'll know by their fruit how healed they are. Because once they're tested, you'll see it. You'll see their response. Always watch the people's response. You'll, you can tell who's healed and who's healing. The person who's healed won't even respond. Oh, okay, cool. God bless you. Keep moving. The person who's healing says, you know what? You know what I want to do? You know what I want to do? <laughs> I am going to do it. That's the person who's healing. That's the person who's in process. When they sit there and say, you know what? You know what I really want to do to you right now? But I'm not going to do it. I'm not. You know what? God's working on me. That's how you know they're in process. Because they acknowledge what they could do. A healed person don't have to acknowledge. It's like, oh, okay. You went off the back. God bless you. Keep moving. I'm not even going to allow your spirit to, to mess up mine right now because I'm in a good spot. But we have to understand triggers. We have to understand the meaning behind it. Because it's just an alert, right? It's just an alert. Just reading in the Bible, I remember reading God sent me to Jonah. And Jonah was a man who was triggered. Jonah was a man who ran away from the call. He ran away from instruction. God told him to go to Nineveh to teach, to preach to the people in Nineveh. And Jonah said, no, I'm not doing that. Those people don't want to be, I mean, heathens don't want to be saved. I'm not going to waste my time going over there. I'm not doing it. I'm not, they're not going to, not, they're, gonna, they're just going to reject me. No, forget it. I'm not doing it. He had a front number one, a fear of rejection. Number two, he was just disobedient. <laughs> number three, he ran. He ran away from instruction because he was triggered. Now, it doesn't go into, in, you know, his history of Jonah, the, of, of who he was as a person, how he grew up, um, what he went through in his life. But you can, you can kind of sense when somebody runs from something, usually they're triggered by something because the trigger is usually followed by a response, usually an unhealed individual. So Jonah runs. He runs from his calling. He runs from what God told him to do. The interesting, the interesting thing about running from God is that you can't run from him. Because he's always there. God's omnipresent. You can't run from him. It's funny when we say, I'm just running from my calling. I'm running from God. What you running from Adam and Eve? Hiding. What you hiding for? <laughs> Y'all sin. I know, but you can't hide from God. God is everywhere. You can't hide from him. So we have this misconception when we stand or when we're in guilt or even in shame, we'll hide. We'll hide and run. Thinking that we can hide from God. Thinking that we can run from God. So Jonah runs from God. Finds himself on a boat. Crazy storm happens, and they're like, wait a minute, this this one in the forecast. <laughs> Something changed when this guy got up on. Who what what happened? Because we was good. Like we checked the weather report. We were good up on this on this boat. Like it was supposed to be easy, easy sailing. But somebody on this boat did something. <laughs> Cause this this looked like an angry weather. You know? Have you ever noticed that some some weather is just angry? Like something's behind this. Something behind this wind. You know, and so Jonah step up. He said, "You know what? It's me. Cast me off this boat. You know, and then you'll be good to go. You 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 won't face no hardship. Your boat will be intact. Nobody will be lost." Jonah jumps off, throw him overboard, gets swallowed up by a whale, a large fish. The Bible says. So he's in the belly of the whale for three days. God deals with him. In three days in the belly processes him. And this is the interesting thing about a process and about development. It's done in the dark. As I mentioned before, God was processing me, developing me. But it's always done in the dark. It's never done in the light. Sometimes God has to expose you to process you. But most times when God is really doing something within your life, he's doing it in the dark. He's doing it when nobody knows. He's doing it when nobody hears. No one's seeing you. You may get calls here and there. But nobody really knows. God is really dealing with you in the closet. God is dealing with you in the room, uh, in that dark place. And it's like being buried underground. Like when the seed is buried. In order for it to grow, it has to be buried. It has to be covered. 
And so I feel like Jonah was in this place of being covered. He's like a seed being covered. And while he's being covered, the Lord is just developing and processing him, allowing him to think about what it is that you're running from. Why are you running? Once Jonah figured it out, once he realized, like, you know what, there's something within that I'm not, I haven't tapped into. Why am I running from you, God? Why am I running from instruction? Why am I, you know, what what is it over there that's that's causing so much pain that I ain't even got there yet? But what is it over there that's causing me a rift in my relationship with God? What is it over there that's causing a relationship rift in, in your marriage or uh, in your friendships or with your children? What is it over there that's causing you to run from responsibility, from run from to run from instruction? What is it? What is triggering you? What is it that you haven't handled? What's the trauma behind the trigger? What haven't you healed from? So sometimes God has to put you in a dark place. And you know, sometimes we think that that dark place is, um, you know, that dark place is God spanking us. You know, like, God put me in this dark place. No. <laughs> First of all, you put you in that dark place. If we can just be honest. Because if you're disobedient, you put yourself there. God didn't put you there. Sometimes we have to be placed in, sometimes we place ourselves in these dark areas because we have to be developed. We actually have to heal. Healing happens in the dark. When when I had this wound right here, I was playing, I was playing, uh, it was a balloon fight in college. It was like two o'clock in the morning. One of my boys hit me up. He was like, hey, bro, um, we having a balloon fight with the girls. I was like, balloon with the girl, what are we doing? Where, where are we at? Huh? What's, what we got to do? Let's get these balloons blown up. Let's put some water in these joints. Let's go. And so we having a water balloon fight outside. Two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. And this is college talking. I mean, it's in college. And, you know, I see one of my friends. I see her. And I'm just ready just to, you know, throw one, throw a good one. And I trip and fall. And I bust it and put a gash in my arm. It was awful, man. It was, But I didn't feel the pain until afterwards. But it was just... This huge gash, I saw the bone, it was crazy, man. And um, I just let it just let it sit for a minute. I was like, I just let it sit, but let me close it up. Because I can't leave that wound open. Let me close it up. Because if I leave it open and exposed, then it's more prone to infection. And a lot of times when we're not covered and we're not developing in a closed, dark place, we're open to infection. We're open to being, uh, um, for the devil to come in and to to manipulate and to change some things in our life to to cause us to go in the different direction that we're than where we're supposed to go we have to learn to be covered in order because if we're not covered we'll be more prone to infection to disease to to find ourselves in holes that we should we we don't find ourselves digging out of because we aren't covered so it's important that we cover ourselves that we allow ourselves the opportunity to be covered so that we can become developed. Jonah's in a well. He's in this large fish mouth, the belly, being developed, being processed, healing. Because healing takes place when the wound is covered. <laughs> healing, the best healing takes place when the wound is covered. And so that's one example. And I'm going to go through a lot, of, a lot of individuals in the Bible who are just triggered. Um, next week's is unreal. Uh, <laughs> uh, but this is just like, Lord, Lord, help me because I'm triggered. I've been triggered, man, about a lot of different things in my life. And I never understood, like, why I did certain things that I did until I got to therapy. And so therapy was, they would tell me, hey, you know, what was the trigger? I'm like, what are you talking about? What was the trigger? Well, why did you act that way? Why did you act out like that? Why did you, why did you go off on them? Why did I go off on him? He's playing ball and he said something crazy and I stepped up. And, you know, he tried, he tried to say something. And I'm, well, why were you triggered to, to want to even respond and retaliate? What was it? Questions that I never asked myself. What was the trigger? So I hope this helps you. I hope you, I hope you understand that a lot of us are triggered. And it's okay to be triggered, but we... We have to understand why we're triggered so that we won't have to respond in such a negligent way. That could cost our careers, that could cost our relationships, that can cost our friendships. We have to understand what the trigger is, how to heal from it, so that we can produce good fruit 
and not just anything. I just throwing stuff out here. So um, that's the that's the the episode for today. I really hope. That was good for you, good to you. I don't do a lot of talk. You know, my podcast is usually 25 minutes, 30 minutes or less. Sometimes if it gets to an hour, then I'm talking real good. <laughs> if it gets to an hour, I'm talking for an hour. I probably have somebody on it with me. And uh, I'm going to have some guests on the show as well. I'm probably going to get my boy Cam back and Carrington and some other guys that I know. Um, I met some really good, cool guys over the over this year that has been phenomenal in my quest for development, my quest for understanding God. I'm talking about married men, men who love their wives, men who love their children. Because it's important who you hang around with. I think you, you, you're you known by who you, ha- who you hang around with, who you do business with. You're, you're known by that. And oftentimes we can spot somebody and where they are in life based off of who they hang out with. And so I'm grateful that God sent me um, and surrounded me around good men, um, and so I'm going to have those men on the on the podcast with me, and it's going to be really good. I feel like uh, they have a lot to present, a lot to offer uh, the world, a lot to offer you guys. Great insight on what's going on in their life. Great insight on how they deal with struggle, how they deal with triggers, how they deal with grief. Um, and that's going to be one of the episodes as well, how to grieve a loss. You know, So it's going to be a deep this season's gonna be a deep season, and I may step on your toes, but that's gonna be okay. I'm stepping on my toes too. You know what I mean? Like, just know that it's out of love. You know, it ain't out of, you know, I ain't doing it to hurt nobody. I really want to do this out of love. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you. Listen, y'all, don't be anxious for anything. Anxiety is just another way of saying that I'm triggered. A lot of people use anxiety as a way to trigger, as a trigger. I'm anxious. Well, why are you anxious? What is behind that feeling? What's behind that sensory feeling um, of anxiety? Um, understanding that trigger. And again, my major was in psychology um, and undergrad. But so I learned about a lot of the emotional and the psychological aspect, the cognitive aspect of why we do certain behaviors, um, the why behind the the what, right? The why behind the how. <laughs> we always got to understand the why first. Um, but yeah, um, even with all that, understand. Let's not be anxious this week. And all our understanding, let's just go to God and pray about everything. Um, and that's something God is dealing with me about, just praying about everything. Don't be anxious. Don't be, even though you may be triggered, just pray about it. If you're triggered, just just wait on the Lord. Just sit there for a minute and process. Like you don't, everything doesn't warrant a response. I mean, this is stuff that God has, has taught me. Like everything doesn't warrant a response. Everything doesn't warrant you to say something back or clap back or. It just shows your maturity. How you respond to things show your, shows your maturity. And I feel like in this season of my life that God is maturing me and testing me. Because there's always going to be something that's going to test you. There will always be something to test you, to trigger you. Because someone's always watching to see how you respond. Whether it's your kids, whether it's your wife. Um, for women, whether it's your husband. You know, whether it's your friends, people uh, who look up to you. They're always watching to see how you handle certain things, how you handle your triggers. My brother told me one time, it's like, hey, bro, like, I watch how you how you handle your trigger. I watch how you handle the test. Sometimes I do good. Sometimes I, I fail at it. It's part of life. It's part of the process. And I told him, say, hey, man, don't put me on a pedestal, bro. Like, look, man, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm human. I'm going to fall sometimes. Uh, I'm not always going to get it right. But I appreciate that you... Are looking at me just like I look to you, um, but everybody, everybody's watching. Somebody's watching you, and so when you get to a place where you say, "Help, I'm triggered," and you find yourself running, get to a place where you're closed with God, where you're closed with God. Find that, find that deep place, that dark place, that you can be covered, but covered by God's blood, covered by His Spirit, um, where you don't get distracted by everybody else saying things around you, triggering you more. But you understand that God is with me and help me to heal in this process so that I don't have to respond in a way um, that could be detrimental to my family or detrimental to my life, detrimental to my call, the purpose on my life. I don't want to mess that up. So God, teach me, heal me in this processing and this development of how I'm living. 
So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that was good to you. This is again, this is season, season two, episode one. I hope that's good. I hope that's real good and full for you. I hope real good from Big Mama's table. You know what I'm saying? From Big Mama's. I hope that was really good for you. But um, yeah, season two, we here, we back, and uh, holla at y'all later. Socially awkward podcast. We in here. Peace. Socially, socially, socially awkward.